Hello everyone, my name is Yvette Astorga. I will be your moderator tonight. Welcome to Hispanotech Self-Discovery Webinar. We are excited to have you join us. To ensure a smooth and enjoyable experience for everyone, we kindly ask, we kindly ask you to turn your microphone off when not speaking. We encourage you to use the chat if you have questions or comments during the webinar. We will have a dedicated Q&A session during the webinar. It will be probably 10 minutes and uh, before finishing. Please be respectful to the presenters and fellow participants, and please keep discussions focused on the webinar's topic. And now I will be presenting our speaker today. Our speakers today is Nestor Castro. He was born in Nicaragua, adopted by Canada, and he described himself as a citizen, citizen of the world. He's passionate about human potential, teamwork, self-leadership, personal and team development. Trained and believed in innovation, technology, and leadership to create better experiences and possibilities for people, organization, and the world. He's, he felt, feels blessed, grateful, and privileged for every opportunity and experience lived and to continue learning every day. His current role, he is a senior level technology project manager leading projects involving development, implementation, and integration of technological solutions. He is working with and for corporate clients in Canada and in the States with teams and stakeholders worldwide. He is an executive director and board member of our Hispanotech organization. He loves helping others to grow, that's why he has the role as a mentor, coach, trainer. He is also a guest speaker in universities, colleges, and businesses schools in North America and Central America. Please let's welcome Nestor Castro. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, Yvette. Thank you very much, everyone. Uh, welcome and thank you for, for joining. Um, so today we're going to talk about this is the first topic we're going to talk about self-discovery and also i'm gonna mention i'm gonna talk a, a little bit about self-leadership these are two overlapping topics um we're gonna cover and this is what i call the inside out process to start building um starting today your best version of uh, tomorrow so um a little bit about me. So I already uh, made uh, a, the, the introduction, um, but I would like to add that I've been involved in different ways to the academic sector for the last 23 years, since uh, 2000, um, playing or performing different roles, including teaching and training roles as well. Um, and, and probably you 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 will be wondering why a tech guy is now talking about self leadership and and um, and also self discovery, which is more like a psychology or maybe a personal development or career development topic. And that is because I've been probably teaching or also providing some training around um, leadership, self leadership and also personal development. And I received training in those topics and different opportunities, um, you know, as a part of the privilege um, of being involved in different ways to do the academic uh, work in different, um, you know, uh, all around the world, okay? Um, and I continue doing that in different ways, including the opportunity to be a mentor, coach, and, and, and training as well. Okay, so let's get into the topic. Um, and the first question I have now is, um, and probably you also are wondering, 
why self-discovery or what is uh, self-discovery about. And I, I always like to make some analogies when I present, you know, some topics. And, and you may probably what you see in your uh, screen is familiar to you. Um, this is, it could be either Google Map, it could be uh, the map that you use in your iPhone or any application, um, you know, to give the orientation about how to get from one place to another place. So when you are using um, this type of application, um, and and probably you know where you want to go, right? And 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 sometimes that's um, is clear. Uh, but also it's very important. It's very important. That this is what uh, self discovery is all about. Is uh, you need to know, and this is something that the application is gonna ask you if. Where are you located right now? Where are you at? Where are you? You know, what is your starting point? And basically the first question is, where am I? So you cannot get to any other place without knowing first where you are, right? And there are a lot of questions around this. Um, and that includes, where do I start? You know, where am I? Well, also, where do I start this journey, right? Um, where am I going? That's another question, right? You need to, uh, to, to understand. How do I get there? What do I need? And how do I measure the progress? So all these questions are part of these applications and it's the same in life, right? So you need to have all these questions, but also you need to respond to all these questions, right? So, um, you need to know the starting point, the finish point, um, and then you're going to get, you know, probably a, a, a line or you're going to get, you know, a, a route to get there. But also you need to know the, the, the how to get there, maybe, you know, by bus or maybe you're using your vehicle or uh, you know, uh, there are different ways to do that. You need to buy a ticket, etc. And one important thing here is um, at any given time, you need to know, you know, where you are in the process, not only where you started, but also where you are at any given time. So basically you need to have some sort of GPS. Right now, this is like, a, we have so many tools, but if you had, a, 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 you know, the traditional paper map, you probably need a compass, right? You need to know, you know, uh, try to identify where you are and then you go from there. So when it comes to self, uh, to self discovery, probably we are talking about more about the, the first, the first, uh, these three questions. Where am I? Where do I start? And where am I going? Okay. So those are fundamental questions that you need to ask uh, for yourself. Um, before we dive deeper into uh, the self-discovery process and also, um, you know, some somehow self-leadership, uh, I would like to cover some preliminary concepts. And one of them is something that really uh, impacted me when when I first uh, heard about this, and, and it's the concept of uh, the locus of control. And and this is very important because it also has to do with these fundam fundamental questions and also um, how you approach life and how do, you know, what type of mindset uh, you have, right? So the, the question here is, you know, is our lives driven internally or is driven externally? So um, uh, maybe we have different answers here, you know, uh, some people might say, Ah, no, it's external because, you know, we have, uh, you know, a government and we have some people ruling the world, or ruling the country, et cetera. But other people might say, no, it's internal because um, I have some control, right? And, and other people will be in between. So let's talk about the, the external uh, locus of control. Um, when, when you have an external locus of control, and this is more, again, about the person, it's not about what is... Uh, Outside is more about what do you think about life and, and the world uh, or even the universe, right? So when the locus of control is external, it's what I call helplessness state. Uh, you basically believe in fate and luck. Okay? Everything is driven by fate and luck. 
Uh, so therefore, my actions and decisions won't determine the outcomes. So if no matter what I do or how I do it, um, I won't get any outcome or the, uh, the outcomes that I want, then there is nothing I can do to change the outcome. So therefore, I do nothing, right? So I can't control my destiny. I, I, I don't have a way to control my destiny. My future is determined by my past, so I can't change it. And then, therefore, I am the victim of my circumstances, right? So as you can see, this is more like a really um, not only helpless um, or helplessness um, approach, but also it's very sad to think, you know, this way. Uh, on the other hand, on, on the other extreme, was we have the locus, the internal locus of control. Uh, in this case, you believe or I believe in causality. Basically, you know, uh, any actions, it's uh, provoking an effect. My actions and decisions is determine, uh, determine my outcomes. Um, so, um, um, if I'm not getting the desired outcome, even though I'm, I'm doing my best, I'm, I'm working hard. So what I need to do, I need to improve. So, but it's myself doing something to get what I want to do. Uh, therefore, I have that. I have control over my destiny. I can design and build my future. And then, therefore, I am not the big thing anymore. Um, but I am the architect of my life. So on the one hand, you don't have control. On the other hand, you have full control uh, over your life. So there is not a unique answer. Every person has a different answer. So um, so probably the psychologist um, might say that we can we 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 need to find a, a balance between the two, right? Because on you know the one hand we know some el some you know aspects of life are driven externally, but also we want to focus on what we can change or what we can control, right? So this is uh, the internal uh, locus of control. And the, and the reason I'm talking about this is because uh, if you believe this way, more on the internal locus of control, therefore, you are going to try and, going to, and you are going to find different ways to achieve your goals, or maybe even you know, setting your goals and to achieve your goals and taking action. Otherwise, if you think you think in a different way, probably um, you are not interested or you're not driven, you know, or motivated to do anything. Okay. The other aspect is uh, I want to mention is about self leadership, which again is a overlapping topic. Um, self leadership is the practice of understanding. This is really important here. Powerful, a uh, couple of powerful lines here. Is the practice of understanding who you are, who you want to be, and where you want to go. On the one hand, on the other hand, it's um, the process of intentionally guiding yourself toward that desire outcome, that desire experience, that desire uh, you know goal. Right. Remember, on the one hand. You need to know who you are, who you want to be, where you want to go. On the other hand, it's yourself driving yourself, guiding you, uh, guiding yourself in that process to achieve um, your desired uh, goal, outcomes, or experiences that you that you want. Okay, um, because we nowadays we talk about leadership, um, but also the, the other side of the leadership, self leadership. You are the leader of yourself. Therefore, if you are in the internal locus of control and then you say, okay, I have, I have the power, I have the control over my life, I, I, have, I, I am the architect of my life, and therefore, uh, I want to be my, you know, I want to be uh, my self-leader. Therefore, I want to um, know who I am, who I want to be, where I want to go, and then I want to push myself toward that direction, okay? Um, there are a few principles or theories around uh, self leadership. I don't, I don't, I don't want to go deeper here, but um, there are three big um, uh, uh, theories uh, or principles around uh, self leadership. Uh, one is self control, or self management, and self regulation. Um, the other one is self determination, which has to do about you know how you motivate yourself or how you find you know, the, the, the internal drive 
to guide you in this um, in, in this process. And then the third one is self-actualizing uh, behaviors. It has to do, um, you know, you need to be in a process of constant changing and uh, in finding different ways or maybe making maybe making the adjustment in the process uh, for for this continuous search for emotional, physical, material, and spiritual uh, spiritual fulfillment uh, in order to achieve. Uh, to develop and achieve your full potential, right? So then you can see we are talking about different aspects. On the one hand, we are talking about self-management, self-regulation. Um, and, and on the other hand, I'm talking about motivation. You need to have the uh, internal motivation. And also on the other hand, you want to achieve your full potential, okay? And there is a link here. Uh, you can visit with more information about self-leadership, but all these concepts are connected to, to each other, right? And, and one, you know, big uh, component I will say about self-leadership uh, is uh, self-awareness, right? Um, if you want to develop your self-leadership uh, um, competencies, um, one thing you need to pay a lot of attention to is to self-awareness and part of self-awareness is self-discovery. You need to know yourself. You need to understand, you know, again, who you are, who you want to be, where do you want to go? And part of the self-awareness, and that's what I did, uh, that's why I did the analogy at the beginning is you need to have this internal GPS or compass, if you will, um, to understand at any given time where you are in this process, because you need to understand where are you starting at, but also you want to understand in this process of uh, developing and growing where you are at any given time. You know, am I progressing well? Where where am I actually? You know, currently, am I going in the right right direction? That's part of self leadership but also self-awareness and self-discovery, okay? And one final, um, you know, notes around self-leadership. There are, a, 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 you know, a, a list of uh, competencies and skills that, again, has to do with the topic of self-discovery. And the first one is self-awareness and self-knowledge, right? So it's very clear that um, in order to be a, a great self-leader, you need to be aware and, and self-aware and also you need to know you need to have a deep understanding and knowledge of yourself and the other ones are identify uh, identifying the side experiences or outcomes constructive thought and decision making you, know, you need to take actions in that process of taking action you are making decisions uh planning and goal setting and by the way, this is one of the topic. Uh, also, we are going to cover in a, in a different week uh, in the mentorship program. Um, then optimizing motivation. You need to keep motivating yourself and finding new ways to motivate yourself to continue growing and pushing yourself to, to the next level, but also to, to the uh, outcome that, that you want. Uh, harnessing the ecosystem, you are not working by your own, but also you have an, an ecosystem that is uh, surrounding you, and then you want to harness uh, this ecosystem, amplifying performance or whatever, you know, find new ways to perform uh, better, um, and, and lastly, uh, embracing failure and um, cultivating grit. So understanding that sometimes you're going to fail, but also to understand that in that process of failure, you know, of, of failing, you also are learning and you need to find new ways to um, this continuous process of uh, improvement. Okay, so this is um, basically uh, some preliminary topics. Um, the self-discovery process. Okay, so when it comes to uh, self-discovery, there are a few areas that we want to identify. And I've been talking in, 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 in the past, um, you know, presentations and including the kickoff event, I was talking about the, um, the game card. And again, I'm using here the analogy of the card in, you know, in a very specific way, but basically, 
um, in this process of self discovery, one thing that you need to do, and this is the, the you know, an actual practical approach, you need to do a self assessment. You need to understand uh, what do you have, what do you, um, who you are, what do you have, what do you have to offer. And when when you change country, and for example, when we come to Canada, one thing that we uh, sometimes forget is um, that we bring a lot of knowledge, we bring a lot of experience, we bring so many talents, uh, we have interests, um, we have a lot of um, experiences, skills, um, and also what I call um, you probably have you know one initial ecosystem that you want to grow um you know in um okay and all these are part of your cars that you want to not only have in mind to identify but also you know continue uh growing or adding okay so let's dive in into these uh details now so talents and interests um so the first question, so the big question here is what am I good at and, and what I enjoy doing? Okay, so um, my recommendation is don't limit your answer and thoughts to your professional field. It's a very general question. Um, you need to cover um, you know, sports, science, spirituality, math, language, log logic, etc. Any possible field um, that you need to identify uh, those aspects. Um, sometimes the talents are visible, sometimes are tangible, sometimes they are not so easy to identify, but yet you need to do a big effort to, to do so. Um, and this is what I call in my uh, kickoff presentation, these are the giving gifts, so the giving cards. So this is given to you uh, by life, uh, you know, and, 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 and you have uh, probably most of these cards, something that you have from the day you, you were born. Um, there are a few uh, guiding questions that you can use eventually. Um, for example, you can take external an external view, but also you can take the internal view. The external view is, you know, what people say. What do people say about me? You know, and and, and, and I'm, I'm 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 talking in the good way. You know, for example, maybe somebody or maybe some people is recognizing are recognizing something or something good about you. So maybe you need to take note. Uh, but also it's very important that your internal view, what do you feel or have you seen that um, in yourself uh, what you believe uh, you are good at? That's a very important question as well. And, you know, um, among those um, different talents that you identify, um, you also need to understand, you know, if, you know, what, which of those talents uh, you enjoy, you know, having, applying, and developing. Okay, so these are talents and interests. Uh, the other, the, the second dimension is knowledge and training. Um, and and the, the big question here is, is, here is, what do I know? And when I say knowledge and training, I mean formally and informally. Sometimes it's maybe you, you took a course, um, you have a degree, uh, that's the formal side of the knowledge and training. Uh, but also you need to include or you need to assess anything that you know, right? Including the informal uh, ways of learning or, or, or getting knowledge, um, you know, by reading books, observation, listening, uh, or simply by practicing, you know, by doing. You also are learning, therefore you are getting some knowledge. And, and, and there is a concept of explicit and, and tacit knowledge, but I, I don't want to... Um, dive deeper into that um, terminology. Okay, and these are normally the, the, the chosen cards, normally, right? So you, you you choose what to study, what to do, or what training to get, et cetera, what certification to get. Again, there are some guiding questions here. I, what I have, I study in the past, what I, I have uh, learned uh, formally and informally, what type, you know, what certification do I have, what type of diplomas, et cetera. And, and and also um and what of this um you know what knowledge i also i i have i i have applied in the past as well both in the personal and the professional life one thing about knowledge uh, that i need to mention though is that knowledge is only meaningful when it's adding value you know so please take note 
that whenever you are taking, uh, you are building this, you know, you are going uh, to this uh, self-discovery process and building what I call the your personal inventory, try to identify those knowledge that is adding value to you and to others as well, okay? Experiences and skills, um, again, it's um, the other side of the coin, you know, knowledge is uh, one side of the coin, experience and skills the other side, basically is what you have um, put in practice, right? And, you know, for when you practice something, you get knowledge, but also by knowing something, you can, you can apply, you know, in, 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 in practice, right? Um, you can put it in practice as well. So this is the other side. You need to identify all those experiences that you have, uh, not only currently, currently, but also in the past. And um, again, there is a list of guiding questions here. Uh, what I have done in the past, um, not only recently, but from the beginning, what type of you know tools or software I know and I I, I use in the past or I'm, you know, I am using and what roles and position I have played and what I learned from those uh, positions that they were experiences, uh, what activities or tasks I have performed that can be transferable to other fields as well. That's really also important. And also you might want to take into account also uh, both uh, soft skills, but also hard skills. And one important thing here about experience and knowledge and skills um it's um it's very important that you take into account those unpaid or volunteer um roles and experiences that you have uh, for example i know that in hispano tech we are using so many amazing tools internally um and and and, and we are you know getting knowledge and getting information and getting the experience on using these tools that maybe we are not using um, in other uh, settings or in other environments, right? For example, that's something uh, that you need to account for. It, it's really important to to have note uh, of those. Okay. And the last um, and the fourth uh, dimension here is the ecosystem. The ecosystem is something is a little bit external, but also it's part of your assets. You know, what is your ecosystem or what is my ecosystem? It's basically the environment and its rules and dynamics I live surrounded by. Okay, so part of my ecosystem are my friends, my colleagues, and the people that I know, the organizations and, and different circles that I belong to, right? So that's part of the ecosystem. And also those are cars that, you know, at some point, uh, I mean, you have it, but I some you might, might want to also use as well. Um, so the bigger the ecosystem, the bigger my circle uh, of action and influence is, of course. Okay, so again, uh, a few lists of uh, guiding questions. Um, who do I know? What type, what connection do I have? Uh, how relevant and meaningful uh, those connections are? What organizations I belong to? And uh, the different uh, aspects of my life, the personal, professional, the stories, uh, settings, uh, what circles I have access to, my personal, again, life, professional, culture, sport, etc. Um, you need to assess everything that is every single aspect and then to understand, uh, what is your, you know, actual, um, uh, I would say, um, circle of, uh, influence, you know, what is, you know, what is called. Um, and also the last question, how frequent do I interact with my neighbor and the different circles, right? Um, so it's really a strategic, but also it's very healthy, uh, both the size, relevance, um, uh, and variety of the ecosystem is we shouldn't be only targeting to have an ecosystem, uh, around our professional life, because that's going to, going to give you, you know, fulfillment or happiness. You need to try to. Uh, have a variety of circles and, and, and networks, you know, could be, you know, uh, cultural circles, uh, or maybe, uh, sports related circles, professional, personal, or different, uh, studies. So uh, according to your goals, according to your interests, both in your personal and professional life as well. Okay. So these are the four, uh, the four dimensions. 
Um, and what I recommend, and, and this is the practical uh, practical approach, you need to, you know, sit down, not right now, but maybe with your mentor in, or in a different time, set aside some time, really quality time, and try to do this exercise. You know, try to analyze these uh, four dimensions, analyze your talents and interests, knowledge and training that you have, experience and skills, uh, and your ecosystem. And also, you know, uh, use some sort of uh, score system. Here's a very basic one. Um, try to assess every card, let's call it every card you have uh, in this um, assessment, what I call again, my personal inventory um, in three different uh, levels, you know, basic, medium, and high, right? So maybe um, you will get something similar like this, right? So you have a few talents, maybe you have some, you know, basic, uh, uh, you know, knowledge about something, but maybe you have an intermediate knowledge about a different thing, and, and maybe you have a advanced knowledge on, on another topic, right? So um, everything is important. Everything is important because sometimes you might need the advanced knowledge for something, and sometimes you need your basic knowledge because you want to improve that knowledge into the next level, right? So this is really important, and I really in, in, in encourage and, and recommend to do um this exercise so so um try to build the longest list possible and classify um every element in your personal inventory because this is the again this is the starting point for you to try to try to understand what what you have um also who you are somehow but also is the starting point to get where you want to want to be. Okay, so in the in the way to do that is once you have your personal inventory, then you can start you, you, you go to the next step, which is basically okay, now I want to be more strategic uh, when it comes to my uh, personal assets or my personal uh, inventory. And and maybe I want to do a SWOT uh, analysis, uh, maybe some of the, some of you already know this concept, but basically SWOT stands for strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threat. Uh, this is very common in the um, you know uh, okay organizational uh, setting, but also is very very useful in the personal uh, 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 as a personal tool for you know trying to understand where you are, where you want to be. Uh, so. Um, uh, again, strengths uh, and weaknesses are internal, opportunities and threats are external. Um, and um, my recommendation here, and it is a general recommendation for uh, the, the strategic approach here, is focus on um, potentiate or leverage your strengths and try to minimize your weaknesses. Uh, this is a psychology approach. Um, you know, the new uh, uh, you know, the, the new um, psychology approach is try to focus on the positive side, which is basically focus on your strength, try to, you know, uh, take advantage of your strengths and try to potentiate, potentiate your strengths and take it to the next level. In that way, you are also somehow are going to uh, improve your weaknesses, right? On the other hand, take Full advantage or the greatest possible advantage of uh, all the opportunities opportunities that are, are, are available to you uh, without losing sight of the external threat that, that you have out there. Again, one possible um, way to do this, again, this is more like the practical approach. Um, it's very simple. Try to, now that you know your personal uh, inventory, which is more related to strengths and weaknesses, um, now you can easily identify what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and then now you analyze the, the, the external uh, world. You try to now find, you know, different opportunities according to your strengths, your weaknesses, but also um, the vision, the goals, and, and, and where you want to go, um, and also analyze the, the threats. Okay, so now you have a full picture 
not only of yourself but also of the external world as well okay and very quickly um i already introduced this concept about the gaming strategy and my kickoff presentation but i'm gonna mention it again uh having in mind that you have weaknesses strengths and, 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 and you know on the internal side but also opportunities and threats on the external side what you want to do with your personal inventory and your cards um you know your 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 um card deck is um, um again you need to know your cards you need to know yourself you need to get better a bit every day and by getting better every day i mean you want to get really useful meaningful cards or additional cards uh to your deck um right to give you more options to again win the game you know what uh you know what, what we call the uh during the kickoff uh, presentation um and and this process again is not only about quantity but also it's about relevance you want to add uh relevant cars useful cars meaningful cars to your deck so you can use it and you can grow uh, in this process of self leadership you know you know driving you towards uh your goals or the desired experiences and outcomes uh, that you want okay um i want to mention also just to um to finalize some uh, additional aspects around these uh topics i want to present also a couple of additional perspectives that we want to maybe might me we might want to consider one it's uh what is called maybe some of you already know this concept of ikigai which for me it's a really an amazing pictorial way of uh, seeing life right um which is basically finding purpose and fulfillment and ikigai is, you know has different meanings uh and there is a debate around this but basically it's a reason for being right it's you finding uh purpose you know in your life and find, finding happiness or fulfillment um and this is important to understand at least the the you know the the pictorial way of representing this um because when 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 you are trying to build uh to initiate your career in a new country um normally our main focus is to survive you know okay i want to get my first job because i want to survive but you need to have, and, and that's good, but also you need to have in mind that the ultimate, the ultimate goal of any person in the planet, any person in the planet's finding purpose and fulfillment. That is it, that is it. Um, and to find that, um, these are some guiding aspects that you need to have in mind. And if you, if you find the intersection between all these aspects, um basically you are finding purpose and fulfillment you know what what are those aspects so the fundamental questions here are what am i good at okay so we already talked about that okay so i know i have some talents right everybody has talents we know that um but also i need to understand what do i love to do i mean i have some talent but maybe i don't love to i don't, I don't love uh doing that okay um it is a, that's a different story and also i need to know what can i be or do that uh can be paid for maybe i have talents i enjoy doing something but nobody's willing to pay for that and that's a and that's a that's a big problem right and the fourth aspect is you know what is needed in the world so if you find the answer to these uh four questions and then find the intersection you are going to find purpose and fulfillment and of course a, a, a happy and successful life and this is the ultimate goal for everybody okay you can visit the link here uh when i share this slide deck and you can have more information uh, about this but it's something you need to have this picture all the time okay and the last one and just to wrap up the presentation it's another aspect that you want to consider is the personality and traits there are so many frameworks around uh personality and traits um i i like it only as a initial guidance but um i don't like it 
to a full extent because every person is different. So if I would like to classify the personality, I will say we have thousands of millions of personalities out there, not only 16. But anyways, this is one of the frameworks. Uh, this is the Myers-Briggs theory that have, uh, and only one of the frameworks uh, that have uh, identified 16 type of uh, different type of uh, personalities. And you might want to take a look at that because it gives you an idea of, um, you know, at least a sense of um, where do you fit, more or less, right? And this is a link to the personality test. It's free. And then it's going to give you some guidance. But again, don't use this as a final determination of who you are. It's only the initial step to understand who you are and who you want to be. Okay. And that's it for today. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now I pass it back to Yvette for question and questions and answers. Thank you, Nestor. Thank you for reminding us that the self-discovery process is uh, vital. And I have a comment and I have a, a a question. I think I will start with the question from uh, Fariva. She asks, how filling the inventory forms help to create the SWOT anal analysis? How the, uh, can you repeat the question? Please? How filling, filling the inventory forms helps to create the SWOT analysis? Yeah. Yeah, so this is a good, a good point because uh, this is all connected. So when you are doing this, for example, um, what's happening here is um, if um, in the SWOT uh, process, uh, remember you are analyzing uh, internal factors, but also external factors, right? And when it comes to your personal inventory, it's more the internal aspect or, you, or yourself. You are analyzing your talents, you're analyzing, you know, the knowledge that you have, experiences that you have. And the ecosystem is a little bit external, but it's something that you own so somehow. It's, it's, it's your, your friends, your family, your connections, uh, the organization you belong to. So when you do this analysis with this is the first step only, and you have clarity about yourself now, when you come here is basically uh, basically the first row is strengths and weaknesses. You need to take it from your personal inventory, right? And remember that in the exercise that I mentioned, you already classify here into different levels, basic, medium, or high. You can use only two. You can use, you know, basic and advanced, that's it. And that's gonna make, make it even more, you know, easier. Uh, when it comes to the SWAT, and then you can say, okay, uh, my strength is whatever I have in my personal inventory, which is advanced, which is high, or maybe is medium. You, you might consider medium also as a strength. And also your weaknesses is something that is, um, um, you know, that is uh, basic. The other perspective to the SWAT analysis when it comes to your personal inventory is um according to the context right so maybe uh you have um you know a really good knowledge about something but maybe that something is not useful is not so useful in your new environment so in that case although you have an advanced knowledge about that um maybe um you know is not necessarily a strength in your new environment okay and then the next step is of course to understand your opportunities and threats, which is uh, in the outside world and it's not part of your inventory. So opportunities and threats are the external aspect and that is not part of your personal uh, inventory. Okay. Yep, thank you, Nestor. And we have a comment from Victor Corrales. He says that there are external forces that we cannot control, but there is a lot of that is in our control. Life is both. Exactly. Um, yeah, there is, um, I didn't mention this, but uh, 
there are different studies uh, about again the locus of control. You know, okay, the external forces, or you know, is is it me that is driving a building entirely my life, and and there's not no no nothing and nobody out there blocking me. Uh, but what the psychology said, or there is a a, a couple of uh, stories about that, is that they say that the the happiest uh, people find the balance between the two. They acknowledge the external forces, right? They acknowledge that, they, they know that there are, um, you know, some challenges out there, but um, even though you focus on those uh, uh, external aspects and you acknowledge them, which is good, you say, okay, I'm gonna focus my energy in what I have control over, or also or what I can change or what I can improve, right? So basically, at that point, by just by doing that, you are you are taking control at least of your life. Maybe you you are not changing the world, but you are changing yourself. So changing yourself internally, growing yourself into a different person, into a better person every day. It's up to you. It's not. It do, doesn't depend on 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 external uh, factors, right? But yeah, it's a balance. Perfect. And I have a question for you. As a newcomer or immigrant, I how often we do need to do this self discovery process every time that we face a new challenge, a new job a new special situation, what would be your recommendation? Yeah, thank you. That's a good question. Um, my, my recommendation is um, the first time you want to take uh, this seriously, right? So you want to sit down, again, set aside some good quality time, quiet time, and really dive deep into understanding yourself and trying to build a full inventory of yourself, right? The beginning, probably the first time is gonna take some time, right? But part of self-leadership, it's also um, about understanding that everything is changing, including yourself, right? So that's why I, I made this analogy of the map, um, because you need to have this EPS activated all the time and try to understand, okay, what is changing? What is changing? You know, what new um, assets or cars do I, you know, do I have to my personal inventory? So um, you, you can find different times to do that. Probably one good point would be, um, you know, once, you know, when you want to land your first job, but also every time you, uh, change job, but also maybe you want to switch career. Uh, maybe you want to begin a new company, uh, etc. So whenever you need to put a plan together, like we like like um, we are doing right now, whenever you want to put a plan together, that's the best moment to say, okay, I want to do the self discovery process and to understand my personal inventory again or to update my personal inventory. And you think that if we ask for help to probably our partner or our friend to help us with this process, is it is a good idea or should be 100% a self-discovery? Um, self-discovery doesn't mean to not include other people. So okay. Self-discovery is the main goal is to understand, uh, you know, yourselves, to understand what do you have inside, what uh, your assets are. So in that process, um, you need to have two, probably two different moments. One moment is your moment alone, um, trying to uh, do this self-assessment again in a quiet moment, etc., with quality time, but also, also, it's very important to ask other people, not only for guidance and for help. Um, Sometimes we need the feedback from other people to have an external view of this assessment. For example, um, uh, to identify, you know, what am I good at, 
right? Maybe you want to ask uh, some friends, family, um, colleagues, or you know, people in your network. Hey, you know, what do you feel? That, or you know, how? Uh, what strengths or you know, um, or even weaknesses you identify in myself, right? And 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 it's really important to get that feedback from other people as well, but also having clarity about your self-assessment as well. Thank you, Nestor. And we have a minute left. If someone have another question, please feel free to raise your hand. Yeah, I see a question very quickly here. Uh, okay. Can we have the slides or access to the recording? Uh, yes, you will. Yes, we will send uh, you the onboarding uh, mentees and mentor session and today's presentation to your email. Well, I think okay. if, if there is not any more questions, um, I think I will say that thank you, everyone. Uh, and I uh, hope you, you enjoyed this uh, webinar. Sorry, yes. sorry, but sorry to interrupt you, but Fariba no made a follow-up question. Um, okay. You can see it right after her first question. Fariba, can you please uh, turn on your micro and... Yeah, sure. I, I asked how we can keep the balance um, between our um like a dynamic uh to pursue our goals but yet uh, uh, be the, keep the balance to to do that and do the growth because um like you should keep the balance you you can't always search for other other things and be in search you also need to relax and work on your skills and other things so the, the keeping the balance is important and i was I was wondering how to do that. Um, just a quick question for you. When you say keep the balance, balance um, between between what aspects? If I may ask. Uh, between uh, settling and pursuing our career goals. Yeah, so, yeah. I would say, again, when we're talking about... Um, Maybe I'm gonna use the strategic framework. Um, you know, one company I'm gonna use, a, you know, an organization um, a perspective, right? So one organization is not in, is not changing all the time. So probably they uh, do this uh, SWOT analysis and they have a strategic plan for the next five or ten years, right? Um, and once they complete the uh, the plan for those five ten years, then they do you know, um, reanalysis or maybe, um, you know, a new plan for the next uh, five, 10, or even 15 years. Um, and the reason for that is because um, when you are doing this type of assessment and then uh, again, you have um, this strategic approach and you have a plan with some specific actions. Again, as you said, uh, you do it and then you start putting the action. You start actually um enjoying the process because it's not only about um you know pursuing you know your goals um your ob objectives in every single moment every single second it's uh it, you want to have a moment for um understanding the foundation to understand and put together a plan and and the the action that you want to take and then you might want to enjoy the ride. For example, I'm gonna use maybe here the map, right? So um, this is probably a good analogy. Uh, once uh, you know the starting point and the finish point, and then you know that you are gonna take a train, maybe you are gonna drive, I don't know, five hours, three, four, five, seven hours, and, and, and you have everything that you need from to get from point A to point B, and then you start, the, the ride, you might want to enjoy the ride, right? You are driving and then you're enjoying, you know, the landscape, uh, the surrounding, everything, and, and not just only thinking on 
uh, that you want to arrive to, in this case, you know, uh, to Montreal. You want to enjoy every single step of the way, um, knowing that from the beginning you already know where you started and also where you are going to uh, land. Um, okay, Th thank you very much. Thank you for the uh, answering the question. Thank you. Thank you for, for the question. Well, it's 7.04. Uh, we will end our presentation tonight. Um, thank you, Nestor, for your participation. Your presentation was very insightful for us. And for everyone, thank you for participating. Thank you for your comments and questions. And we will see you soon again. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. By, very by much. the way, um, I have a question to, to the um, organizer that I'm still experiencing some difficulty access the uh, mentorship software, like the website. I still don't have, still don't have the login. Uh, sorry, who is that? Uh, yes. uh, this is Iris speaking. Okay, so Iris, uh, we are going to reach out to you by email, so we are following up on that. Okay. Oh, that's great. Thank uh, you very much. Okay, but thank you for letting us, letting us know. Yeah, just, just make sure that uh, I was not forgot. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. no. We, we, we have it in mind. Thank okay. you so much. Yeah. We took oh, note night. about it. Thank you, Iris. Thank you, Thank you, everyone. Have a good night, everyone. Have a good night. Thank you Thank and you. bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. bye.